Hello, my name is Voltero, and today I'm going to explain everything you need to know about Trinity Factorio. Now, before we get started, I just want to say thank you to those who have contributed to my Patreon over the last couple of months, and a special thanks to Henning and Daniel Willan. You guys rock. Well, first of all, the most important and game-changing thing you need to know about trains is how to place real signals and relation signals. It is something you can't play without and so many people have trouble with. So before going into detail, uh, just to make it as easy as possible, all you need to do is this simple rule. Place a rail chain signal going into a junction and rail signals on all of its exits. Well, roll credits and video, that's basically it. Just follow that rule and you'll be able to build whatever train systems you want. Now, to explain a bit why this is, let's see some examples. So first of all, you need to know that rails are divided into blocks by placing normal or chain signals and that this indicates uh, if the next block after it is occupied or not. Also, that one side of the rail is for turning the trains to go to the right and the other one for the left. By the way, trains can go both ways, which is more efficient but uh, uh, more difficult to manage. Now, with all things in mind, let's see the first example. As you can see, it's a rail system that goes from left to right and has an upward junction in the middle. So, if you use a signal, you can see the system is divided into four blocks. Now, let's just simulate a train that wants to go from here to one of the junctions. As you can see, everything stays the same. All lights remain green, the chain can go both ways. Now, if I were to place a train on this block, this real signal is going to turn red, chilling its next block is occupied, while also turning the real chain signal to blue, indicating there's now one of the paths not available. And of course, the rail signal is going to remain green because there's nothing occupying its block. Finally, if I were to put another train on the other path of the junction, now all signals become red. The rail signals indicating the next blocks are occupied, and the rail chain signals turn red, indicating that all of its next rail signals are also red. Now, for the second example, uh, we have a simple one-way crossing with trains coming from above to the top and from left to right. As always, just follow the simple rule. Place a rail chain signal going into a junction and rail signals on all of its exits. So in this case, we must place a rail chain signal before the crossing and a rail signal after it. The same goes with the horizontal rail. With this, you endure the safe passage of trains going both ways. Note that if there's a train in the middle block, it will turn the rail chain signals red indicating this. But for example, this rail signal will remain green, because uh, the next block after it is free. But since the train in the middle occupies also part of the block uh, from above, it will also train that rail signal red. Next, we have a simple waiting area for trains wanting to go to the station. This is used for being able to send multiple trains to a single station. So when there's a train already on the station, the next ones are going to wait before it. Waiting areas for trains comes in various forms and flavors. This is a horizontal design. This following example starts horizontally, then has its waiting area vertically, and then exits horizontally. It is the same concept as the one before. Starts with a rail chain signal going into a junction, then rail signals after it, then again rail chain signals going into a junction, and a rail signal after it. We are always applying the same rule. Another popular system is having two rail lines, each one only going in one direction. This makes things very easy to manage and expand later on. I recommend leaving a space of two rails in between. This makes signaling two rail lines a lot more organized. So next we have the first example, but in this case with two rails horizontally, and we want the junction to be able to go to both uh, directions. So in the one above, uh, we have trains going this way and trains going this way, and we want the junction to be an exit junction, so we place those signals to the job. Note that we could also place rail signals here and here, and then place rail chain signals here, here, and here, but in this case, that's an overkill, and often slows down trains the throughput than having only the bare minimum. The one below is the opposite, we want the junctions to be an entry to the lanes, so we must place those signals. In this next example, we have what's called a T-junction, this one having two rail lines, one for each direction. Next, we have a simple forward crossing. That's very easy to build. Just take a blueprint of the T-junction, remove uh, the signals, and paste that design uh, to make the forward crossing. Then add the necessary signals and you're done. Then we have what's called a roundabout. It does the same job as a forward crossing, with the main difference being that a forward crossing is easier to navigate on manual mode than on a roundabout. Yet I usually prefer being the roundabouts. Um, you can use whichever you like most. Well, those were the most usual junctions you're going to have to deal with. Now I'm going to talk about the different rail systems for your base. 
the two most popular ones uh, are a modular base and a city block base. A modular base refers to a rail system often of two or four rail lines, one or two lines for each direction, that uses T junctions, four way crossings, roundabouts, etc. It is used to easily expand your factory by making branches and building different modular factories from distance from each other. Uh, this system is often used uh, in railroad maps and when printed by Nilo. A city block base refers to a grid of rectangular or hexagonal or whatever the form or size blocks, allowing for a more organized way of building your base. It is often used when played with heavy complexity mods such as bobs, angels, panadons, etc. Having a grid of rails also helps a lot to lower traffic. For example, if there's a train that wants to go from here to here, but there's a train here and here, it will surround them and it will get to its destination from the block uh, to the right. I usually start each game uh, with a starter base just to unlock the trains and the necessary research and items to then being able to start transitioning to a modular base to get things going and expand a lot faster. And then I decide if I want to move into a city block base or it's not worth the effort. It is up to you to design your base, whether you want to make a modular or city block base or if you're a spaghetti chef with your belts and you may want to do the same with your rails, I don't know, whatever floats your boat. Also, keep in mind that, as everything else in Factorio, this can be optimized uh, a lot further. The designs I showed today uh, are not the perfect best trains throughout book designs. I use them to teach about trains. You can absolutely use them on your bases, and they are going to be more than enough. But just know that there are better designs for each of these. But now that you know the basics, I hope uh, you can test and make your own designs as you go. All you need to do is follow the simple rule. Thanks for watching.